Greetings. I'm Hal Ming with the Center for Food Preservation Arts, and I'm delighted to be back with you again for the second episode in our series on home food preservation that we're producing in collaboration with Food is Free Tacoma. So in this uh, episode, we're going to be doing a recipe I was unfamiliar with until a month or two ago, and it's become one of my favorites, jardinara. And as you can probably tell, even through my rough pronunciation, its origin is Italian. And the translation is roughly from the garden. So in this recipe, you're able to use a lot of the abundance of the garden. It's a very delightful pickled recipe. There are many variations of it so that you can use a lot of um, peppers from your garden if you like it spicy, or you can use basil and marjoram for a sweeter, milder taste. There are basically two styles. There's the traditional Italian, which is made with just vinegar. And then there's the variation that they call the Chicago style, which has both vinegar and oil in it. Now, the style that we're making uh, today is going to be just the traditional because it's not considered safe to home can products that have oils in them. But certainly, uh, you can take the product that we make tonight and just before you use it or a day or two in advance, you can open it up and mix a nice olive oil into it. And then it has to be refrigerated. And so this is an example of some that I have made before. And it's a fairly small cut. You can also do larger cut if you're using it as a relish plate, but this is a pretty small cut to go on top of different sandwiches. It's especially good with the Chicago style because of the addition of the oils. So we're going to start off by making the brine for the pickling. And it's a ratio of two to one, two parts vinegar to one part water. So we have that pre-mixed here. And I'm going to go ahead and get this started heating up. And then also we have the spices. This is a bay leaf off of one of my bay, uh, my um, culinary bay trees. There are two kinds of bay. So you wanna be sure if you have a bay tree, you make sure that you have a culinary one. Garlic, of course, lots of garlic, and then some peppercorns and salt. Now you put all of those spices into the spice bag and you add a bit of sugar also and you bring it up to a boil and let it boil for about five minutes to get all of those great flavors diffused out through the brine. And so we've let that boil for five minutes so that all the flavors of the spices would diffuse out through the brine. And after five minutes, we go ahead and take out the spice bag. And then we add in some of the vegetables. We have, these are in larger chunks than I showed you in the jar, because this is going to be a relish kind of plate. And we're doing just like about a quarter of the recipe. And then after, I, I like to go ahead and put the spice bag back in for this last part, where we bring it back up to a boil and let all the vegetables boil and soften up a bit. So this has been cooking for a while and we'll take the spice bag out again. And then the final ingredient is a mixture of peppers. 
and usually they put a lot of red peppers in, but I chose to go because there were some really nice yellow and orange ones. And so once you get the peppers in, because you want them to maintain their crispiness, which things like the cauliflower and the carrots will do naturally, even though they're cooked, you want to turn the heat off and just let it sit for a little bit, which gives us an opportunity to get ready for canning it. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the canner back up to heat. And one of the things when you're canning, we're doing just, as I said, a, a small batch of it, about a third of what you could do. But when you're doing a canner and you have less jars than will fill the canner, it's a good idea to put in some extra just so that it keeps the water displaced. And I like to just go ahead and put some boiled water in because these will can just like any other jar and you have water for storage. And it will keep better than water that you buy that's in plastic containers. So it'll stay good for a couple of years. You can put a little bit of salt in it also to add some flavor to it. But then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is warm up these pre-washed jars because you don't want to put really hot contents into cold jars and you also never want to put them onto a metal or a marble surface. You want to be sure you put them on something that diffuses the heat or you have a good possibility of breaking the bottles of the jars the bottoms of the jars is what I meant to say. And of course we have the rings and then you have the lids. And I love this little rack because it keeps everything very organized. You can get a dozen lids in at a time. You wanna be sure and create a little bit of space there. And it used to be that they would tell you to boil the lids, but now the suggestion is to just put them in for about 45 seconds, just so they're warm enough uh, that the rubber has already started to be a little bit soft. Get the jars out. And of course, everything has been wa well washed, ready to go. Oh yeah, that is one. And so rather than trying to scoop everything up all at once, I'll go ahead and add the vegetables in first. And you want about a half inch of headroom. Mmm, that smells nice. still untouched by human hands. Turn that off temporarily. Get the lids out. Have your paper towel to wipe the rims thoroughly so there's no particles of food that might be caught.
There we go. Wipe again, just to be sure. And I don't know how well this shows, but you can see that this dot is up if you're close to it. When the jars are properly sealed, that center part is sucked back in. You should have about a half inch of water, or I mean an inch to two inches of water over the top. So I'm going to have to pause for a moment here and get a little bit more water. So this particular uh, recipe has a 10 minute at a full boil. Every recipe could have the potential of having a different time on it. Things with high acid, like pickles, and, uh, most jams would be 10 minutes. Other products could be as much as 20, 25 minutes. And pressure canning is a whole other thing that takes a great deal of time. So after the 10 minutes has passed at a full rolling boil, you can still see some of the steam. You turn it off and you leave the lid on. No peaking because you're allowing it to cool and the vacuum that's already been created in here sucks the lid down and that's what makes the seal. So once it's properly sealed, you want to store the jars without the rings on because if it traps any water or there's always a little bit of outflow, so this is an acidic brine, that could cause the lids to rust and that could break the seal. But once they're properly sealed, you can also take the rings off and do something, you know, test for the sound, but you can also do something that's called truing. But you wanna be sure that you got a good grip on it, but you pick it up by just your fingers on the lid itself. And that lets you know that it's sealed really well. But that's only after 12 to 24 hours. And so while we're waiting uh, for the five minutes to pass, talk a little bit about some of the great uses for these. As I said, this is a small mix that I made because I intend to put it on some homemade bread sandwiches with some lunch meats, things like that. Um, for that, once that I get ready to use it, I'll be draining off a lot of the brine and mixing it with a fine olive oil and letting it um, kind of sit in that oil in the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours before I use it. Then this larger mix that's going to be coming out of here, I'm going to be using that on relish plates. So it's very, um, you know, it's very versatile. As I mentioned earlier, you can adjust the spicing as long as you follow the recipe. You can make it hot, you can make it cold, cooler. You can make it sweeter herbs. But the one thing that you never want to mess with is the ratio of the vinegar and the water. Whatever the recipe says, that's what you stick with because that's what causes it to have enough acidity to be safe when you water back can. So thank you. Please go to the resource link that we're, we will have on both the uh, Facebook page and then also be on the video, uh, description of the video on YouTube. Um, there's the link uh, there for how to pronounce a lot of Italian words and also a couple of different recipe sources. 
So please enjoy and come back for another session. Episode number three is going to be Pickwick. And we're going to do a couple of unusual things, not just cucumbers. Enjoy.